live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones here at 888 825 225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Joe is in Houston to start off this particular hour. What's up, Joe? Hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. It's a pleasure to speak with you both. You too, sir. How can we help? Yes, sir. So recently, um, I've heard you mention that you don't advise someone to open a brokerage account if their mortgage isn't paid off. And I've been listening to you for a little while now. And my question is, I'm on baby step four, five, and six. And I'm trying to invest 15% of my income and I'm maxing out my 401k at my work. And I'm also maxing out a uh, Roth IRA for my, myself and my wife. So my question is with the extra um, percentage that I have, do I open a brokerage account and just put it in mutual funds or should I just throw the rest of my mortgage? You can just throw it. You're not up to 15% by doing all of that. No, sir. Cause our, our income's approaching about 300 K way to go. Mm, Congratulations. Good. Okay. Well, then, yeah. I mean, you just need to get it into mutual funds. If you want to use a brokerage account to put it into mutual funds, that's fine. Uh, the thing, when okay. some, when most people say brokerage account, they mean, I'm going to take my golfing buddy's best suggestion and buy some stocks with some broker. Right. Translation, you're getting ready to lose your freaking money. Okay. Right. Right. And so, but you actually tactically, functionally can use a brokerage account to buy mutual funds. If you get with one of our smart investor pros, you'll just have an account with them that they manage everything. And you can put like your smart, you can put your Roth IRAs in that account. You can put your other stuff in that account. And it is, it does technically fall under the heading of a brokerage account. But this is not account, an account where we're, buying and selling single stocks. And sometimes people translate the word brokerage account mm. to that. When I hear someone right. say that off the street, that's what I always think they're talking about because it usually is. You see what I'm saying? Right. Would you recommend putting it in the four types of mutual funds that you typically recommend or, or an index fund? Uh, since it's taxable, probably an index fund. I'll probably put it in an okay. S&P 500 because it's going to – that is a, that falls in the growth in growth stock category, but it's going to have a low turnover ratio, so you're not going to be taxes on it until you cash right, it out right. to amount to anything. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I'd go – is there another way to max that? You don't have any self-employed income of any kind? No, sir. Okay. I don't know of another way to max that out. But again, if you're working with Smart Investor Pro, you might ask them if there's another way to get at that. Well, the good thing is he's got a high income. I bet you he'll have the ability to retire a little bit earlier than average, and then he'll have some money available to him before 59 and a half. Yeah, that, that S&P will serve, you're right, as a bridge, yeah. as some bridge money, because he's putting 45,000 bucks away, yeah. 15% of 300,000. He's yeah. putting you know 45 grand away a, a year. That's four grand a month. I mean, he's yeah. kicking butt. He's doing that's, great. That's going to get him to some serious net worth very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love it. Oh, man. There's just people all over America that have a brain. None of them are in Washington, D.C. <laughs> but there's people all over America that have a brain. That guy's got a brain. He sure does. I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah, I like, how he's, I like what he's doing. They're everywhere. They're smart people. There really are smart people out there. You just don't see them much on the news. <laughs> Uh, Arnold's with us in Houston, Texas. Hey, Arnold, what's up? Hello? Arnold? Hello? Uh, something's wrong with your phone. Try one more time. Take it off speakerphone. Three? I'm sorry. Me. Okay, you got to get. You're gonna have to get back on and see if we can teach you to use yeah. your phone. All right, Stephen is with us in Springfield, Missouri. Hey, Stephen, what's up? Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me? Okay. Sure. What's up? Hey, Dave, uh, my wife and I, we have a primary residence that's on a 15-year loan. We owe about $220,000, uh, but we own a lake property that we, we uh, paid off actually down near Branson. Um, it's on a one-year lease right now. It'll be up soon. We're, we're contemplating uh, it's worth about $350,000. We've thought about just selling it to pay off the primary. Kind of, We've done a little bit of Davish over the years. We've flipped a couple properties, but we have five kids. Um, and we could we could sell the lake house for about three hundred and fifty thousand and pay off the current. So just kind of want to get your thoughts on on what you would do in that situation. What's your income? 
Um, I'm in sales. Um, base is around 140, but uh, goes up to about 175 if I have a good year and my wife stays at home with our kids. Do you lo- do you have any other debt? It's just those two homes, right? Or it's just the one? Yeah, home? yeah, just the just the debt on the primary residence. No other personal debt. No, so you zero. leased you leased your lake house out because you're not using it. Yeah, we we bought it to use. You know, go down to the lake and use it from time to time, and then. We we just we don't get down enough with the kids being so busy. So we and it it gener- it's paid off, but mm-hmm. uh, we get twenty two hundred dollars a month. Uh, well, twenty three hundred dollars a month, but we still pay the HOAs, so yeah. we net about two thousand a month. Down so there. Em- emotionally, this is not your family's favorite place to go in the summer that you're going to sell, and your children are all going to run away and hide in a homeless shelter because they hate their dad. <laughs> emotionally, this is a rental house. Yeah, I mean, I'm from the area, so there is a, there is some connection to the area. But uh, if I sold you know, my lake house, um, I, I you would probably never find my body. <laughs> my children and my grandchildren would go bananas. We're there every weekend all summer, boats and sea dews and skis and tubes. And if I sold my lake house, it would be like the end of the Ramsey family as we know it. And so you're not even in that category. Mm. Is it far no. from you? Is it a far drive? Yeah, or? no, we're two hours away. We're out near Joplin. But like I said, with the kids being busy in school, we just don't get down there as much. And so I've, I've done some math, and I'm like, you know, if we go down and rent an Airbnb 15 nights a year, go see my family, you know, it the the utility the utilities are the property tax and the HOA and the insurance. I mean, mm-hmm. let's say it's five grand a year. Sell it, um, Stephen. You, know. you don't want the house anymore. Sell it. <laughs> pay off the primary be debt You've already sold it 16 so. times in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> there was no fight in you at all to keep it. I gave uh-uh. you every chance. How does your wife feel? Is she ready to get rid of it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, sell we're it. 35. Sell it. Yeah. If your all wife right. says sell it, sell it. She's right. Is it that you're just having a hard time because it's cash flowing? Yeah, and you feel and like you're. Uh, yeah, and we're just like, well, we have one house paid off, but not the primary, so uh-huh. we just go back and forth in our minds. I think we're trading. If you were going to buy a three hundred thousand dollar rental, it would not be a lake house two hours away. Right. This became a rental by default when your family quit using it. Uh huh. Right. Sell right. it. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks. No default. No <laughs> default rental properties. Well, no, that's no exciting. Default rental properties. He's getting ready to have a paid off. Primary Woo-hoo! mortgage. With That's five great. kids. Yeah. With five oh, kids. Wonderful. I'm telling you, Jade, they're smart people smart in America. Smart people. We met they're a couple of them there. today. We are collecting <laughs> them here on The Ramsey Show. We have the largest collection of smart people. I love it. In America. Watch the other shows. They're not on those shows. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Today's question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. When something in your home breaks, Neighborly is the name to remember. You know it by names like Mr. Rooter or Molly Maid or Mr. Electric and many, many other wonderful names. And the Neighborly Done Right promise, with that, you'll know you're getting great service from their network of local home service providers. It's an incredible company. We are honored to have them sponsoring our question of the day. So go to neighborly.com today. 
Today's question of the day comes from Andrew in Wisconsin. He says, I'm in my mid 50s with two kids. I've done relatively well in life, but have had some problems in life like cancer. I recovered, thankfully, but it does run in my family. So I'm worried about how long I'll live. And I wrote a will last year. I have a son and daughter in their 20s. One is doing well, the other not so much. My youngest daughter has struggled with addiction to opiates and has gone to rehab several times. Although she has been sober now for several months, I'm well aware of the idea that once an addict, always an addict. How should I set up my will so that I keep my daughter safe when I pass? My friend suggested that I request uh, it gets paid in annuity as opposed to a lump sum. I'm looking for your advice on this. That's a really, really good question. Well, I'm glad that you're doing well from the cancer. Um, You know, I would suggest, I think it's a great thing that you have a will, but I would suggest also uh, getting a trust in place. And I'm telling you that because it's going to allow you to uh, determine how this money is distributed and all the different terms around it. Uh, My husband and I are actually walking through that with our trust and with our kids. Um, A will is a great place to start, but if you... if you have those things that you want to delineate with your children, you're going to have to take it a step further um, and get a trust. And so that's what I would suggest to you. Um, and just put in there whatever you want it. Dave, I know you've got a whole lot of stipulations on how these things work out, especially when it comes to, to addicts. You know, you got to you got to be careful there. Yeah, your your friend is wrong. An annuity won't work. That will be a steady stream of payments to buy opiates with. The annuity doesn't turn on or off based on her addiction. Right. And so um, you can um, you can set a trustee on a trust, and the trust can be formed at your death, at the direction of the will. You don't have to put it in place now. And her portion, your your son's portion, could be just released to him. Mm-hmm. Her portion could be left into trust, and um, you know I, I would release a, a, amounts of money based on uh, years or months of sobriety. Because what we're trying to do here is not finance her addiction and, um, and, and not jar her and knock her out of the saddle of sobriety. So, I mean, let's just pretend, okay, let's just throw out a, a number that to her is big. Mm-hmm. Whatever that number is could knock her out of the saddle because she has this sense that now she has a new source of mm-hmm. uh, of. Uh, a provision for her whole life and so she relaxes a little bit in the in the fight to stay sober yeah that's good and so uh, uh if, if she perceives a hundred thousand dollars to be a lot of money it's not in mm-hmm. these situations but if she perceives that it could knock her out of the saddle so i would personally leave it into a trust and get with an estate planning attorney and um have the trustee uh monitor her sobriety and uh, if she's attending AA, for instance, uh, you would get a coin at various milestones. And based on those milestones, you could release money uh, at, at the one year. You know, she's already uh, been sober for a while, it sounds like. That's good. Several months. Um, and But, I mean, at a one-year mark, a two-year mark, a five-year mark, um, or you could increase it or you could release it all at a certain mark. Mm-hmm. If someone's been sober for five or 10 years, you know, they've done, especially from opiates that they, you know, I'm not an addiction expert, but sadly we work with a lot of addicts. Uh-huh. So we've learned a lot because a hundred percent of addicts have money problems. <laughs> Stuff's expensive. And so, um, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, we get to learn a lot about it sadly. And, um, as a layman, not as a medical professional, but anyway, all that to say, opiates, if she can stay dry five years, she's probably dry for life. Yeah. And um, he's in his mid-50s. You're you're going to, God willing, be able to watch this yeah, throughout you, the you next could, 10 years and you make could those adjustments. It, you could just do away with the trust at some point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like if, in other words, if it, let's say you live 10 years and she's dry for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You could say, all right, I don't need the trust and redo your will. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but in the, in the meantime, uh, if you're going to do it today, I would just say, okay, give some milestones, and you could work with her counselor. You could have the counselor report to the trustee, uh, and they have to have the she has to sign the right to do that in order to get money because counselor cannot report her information legally mm-hmm. without her permission. Mm-hmm. But she could say, okay, in order to get you know funds released, the the counselor has to the sponsor from AA has to whatever it is. And then the trustee, whoever that's, I would not make your son the trustee. I don't want him to be his, his sister's keeper. That's a good point. I want him to just be able to love her as, and support her as her brother, 
well, not the keeper of her money. And you should have these discussions with both of them. Yeah, talk about it. Yeah. Talk about it. That's a really good point. Anytime you're dealing with adults and a will of any kind, yeah. just say, look, if you're going to piss people off, do it while you're alive. Okay? Tell them <laughs> you're not in the will. You're not in the will. Okay? Yeah. It's not fair for everybody else to have to deal with your actions after you're gone and everybody else is emotional about it. So you need to have a reading of the will or essentially that uh, where everybody knows what's going on here and, you know. And I, it's real easy with her. I'm just going to say, I love you so much that I'm not going to finance a potential relapse. Absolutely. And so I'm going to dole this out based on sobriety because, as an act of love, not as an act of punishment for your oh, addiction. Yeah. And talk to her about that while you're alive because trust can't convey the emotion of a dad right. that's loving his daughter well. Right. And so... That, this is an excellent time to do that. So it that's a good, really good point, Jade. And just a reminder, everybody needs a will. Yep. Right? Yep. Everybody needs a will. Everybody doesn't need a trust, but there are times when um, it's the best choice for you. Yeah. And the only time you're going to have ongoing trust, um, typically, our special needs child mm -hmm. is going to be ongoing throughout their life. Uh, a situation like this is going to be ongoing, but it's probably not forever. It's not perpetual. Right. Uh, the And the only other ongoing trust are where there's like large a large estate or you're trying to manage the estate out of mm -hmm. the trust, not just um, not just keep from harming someone that you're leaving behind. Right. Like your children, if you've got uh, minor children and none of them are special needs, you, you might just have a trust that until they're a certain age and then, right. it, then yep. it evaporates and the money's just distributed to them. And that would be normal as well. So uh, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah. Go, go to mamabearlegalforms.com if you don't have your will in place. And they can help you with basic trusts as well. Mm -hmm. If you need a complicated thing, like this one's a little complicated. I'd probably see an estate planning attorney. It's worth a few hundred dollars to uh, more to, to get this done right and to have someone to, that teaches you and consults with you about what the law allows in your state on um, managing that distribution. But the annuity is not the answer. Arnold is with us in Houston, Texas. Hi, and Arnold. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Did we get your phone? fix brother yes sir how you doing mr ramsey <laughs> better than i deserve that is so much better thank it you is. sir how can i help uh just uh well i've been a, uh, i've been following your show for about a year now and finally decided to start doing things uh the way you teach and well i got a little bit of a question um, i'm about to start this that, that snowball and i want to know if it's a little bit different in my case uh, so i have a motorcycle loan that my ex-girlfriend took out for me um i crashed the motorcycle and I injured myself pretty badly. After a couple of months of litigation, I got a settlement. That's just enough to cover the loan, about fifteen thousand um, dollars. So what I'm wondering is, do I dump that into this that snowball, or do I pay off? Do I pay her off so that she can, uh, you know, be out of my life for good, and I can be out of hers? You pay her off. I pay her off. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the so, right, okay, it's the right, right thing to do. You need to. It's not fair to her. Yeah, this whole I move, understand. this whole move was dumb on her part, your part, and because and you can tell yeah. why now because it's left you in a lurch emotionally and relationally, and so and this money was for the motorcycle, from the motorcycle, about the motorcycle, yeah. so you just pay her off, and that clears it. So it's not it's not a random piece of money. Right. Yeah, I would do the same thing. Get her out of your life. If you, you use those words, get her out of my life. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> I, and my guess is she feels the same way. Yeah. This is The Ramsey Show.
Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. If you are a new listener or viewer, and we know there are a bunch of you based on all of our analytics and numbers, and a huge number of you have joined us in just the last few months. Thank you for that. Uh, you may be a little bit out of the loop on all these, uh, all this lingo, the baby steps and debt snowballs and all those kinds of things we talk about around here all the time. We'll try to keep you up to date, but if you want to really dive into it and start to learn where you are and where you need to go next uh it's a free service just go to ramseysolutions.com click on get started and uh, we'll help you figure out your next best step from where you are right now ramseysolutions.com it's completely free click get started sandy is with us in nashville hi son sandy welcome to the ramsey show hi dave thanks for taking my call sure um I've been agonizing over something for a few weeks, walking around my house saying, what would Dave say? What would Dave say? So today I decided to call and see what you would say about this. My husband wants to buy an Airbnb in Florida as an investment. We have no emergency fund. We have excellent credit. All we do have is the equity in our house, which we do have a mortgage on. Um, I'm terrified about this idea. It would require a home equity line of credit and possibly another investment mortgage loan on top of that. So what? You already know what Dave would say. Yes, I do. I believe. And do you want to know what Jade would say? (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Well, I might not be able to say it on the air, but (laughs) but but it ends in the word. It ends in the word no. Yeah. yeah. C- capital N O. You're broke people. Yeah. Broke people don't need to buy investment properties. Broke people really don't need to buy high risk investment properties. Broke people really don't need to buy high risk investment properties in another state with all hundred percent borrowed money. Ooh, and leveraged on your own home. Right. This goes sideways, it's got nowhere to go but bad. Okay. So let me let me That's... tell you, he's been watching he's been spending too much time on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here, here's what the Internet, here's what the idiots on Tic Tac will tell you, OK, that um, that running an Airbnb is 100 percent profit. You're going to make so much money. You're going to be just bathing in money. There's going to be cash everywhere. It fails to mention the renters that tear up your house. It fails to mention the times that it sits empty. It fails to mention the high management fees. It fails to mention all of the costs of your maid service. It fails to mention uh, the fact that uh, the local municipality decides that Airbnbs are no longer legal and they pass a law prohibiting Airbnb in your neighborhood, which is happening in some areas, and Mm -hmm. HOAs are preventing them left and right because they don't want a hotel in their neighborhood, which is essentially what a Airbnb is. And uh, the things, if everything works perfect the way the Tic Tac guys say, you're going to be so rich it's unbelievable. But guess what? You and I live in the real world. It doesn't work that way. Running an Airbnb Mm -hmm. is a complete pain in the bahunkus. Okay, that's exactly what every cell in me is screaming. Yeah. Are you so, going to be able to convince him of that? She's not going to sign the deed. I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying. Don't, so, just no, I refuse to is, sign the HELOC. The house has, has yeah. your name on it in Tennessee as well. He can't get a HELOC yeah. without your signature. Right. No. Okay. Well, no. I, I, I thank you all so much. Yeah, we'll discuss the marriage everything. aspects of this, but no. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't do it. Because, well, you know, here's the thing. Who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies? The heart of her husband safely trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. Sandy, you have what's called common sense. Mm-hmm. You can perceive risk a mile away. Your husband has spent so much time on Tic Tac that he has no idea what real risk is and how much work and hassle and problems this is. You can make money running an Airbnb, but, you know, you can also make money running a hotel, but it's called a full-time job. Somebody has to manage the hotel. 
Somebody has to manage the maintenance people. Somebody has to manage the maid service. Somebody has to. Ma- th- this is not just found money that you walk out on the sidewalk and pick <laughs> up a bale of money because you signed up for Airbnb because some moron on Tic Tac said it was a great idea. It's passive. It's passive it's income, passive Dave. Income. There's no passive about it. <laughs> you talk about active. This is about as active a piece of real okay. estate as you can get. Again. There is situations where you can make bank on this if you're willing to go through the hassle and the hard work and put up with it, but it's not as much as people say it is, Mm -hmm. and it's certainly not as much as your gross rent projection is by freaking Airbnb, because all they'll tell you is if you keep it full all the time, here's what we can get for it. Well, nobody keeps it full all the time, number one. Number two, nobody puts everybody in there and 100% of them pay. Never happens. Nobody puts everybody in there, and they don't tear it up past the, beyond the level of their deposit. Okay. Never happens. So, dad gum, man. I, I got a, 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 a three degrees of separation uh-huh. guy that has a, a, an expensive property that he put, and uh, a bunch of uh, characters <laughs> went in there, and one of them killed the other one in his house. <gasps> Oh, a murder my gosh. in his house. Oh, so was not expecting that. Yeah, okay. there you go. That, that's my that's my love of Airbnb. It just went wow. away right then. But I, that doesn't happen very often. But I mean, these characters, and this was not a cheap, this was not a house in the yeah. in the wrong end of town or whatever it is. You know, golly. Sheesh. No, this is this was people partying and yeah. They partied too hard. Oh my gosh. Yeah, out of control. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, does that, is that, is that going to happen? No, that's not going to happen. Right. All right. But the point is you're running a high turnover night to night, week mm-hmm. to week rental. If this is not, you put a, a tenant in there and they stay in there a year and you have a, a, an actual relationship with the yeah. tenant. So, okay. So here I am playing devil's advocate, as I sometimes do, there are listeners who want to get into that space and they, they don't, we don't want them to listen to Tic Tac, as you call it. Yeah. What do you say Pay cash to the for person? It. Pay cash for it after your home's paid for, baby step seven, mm-hmm. and understand that you are embracing two things that no one talks about when you do Airbnb. Mm-hmm. High hassle factor, mm-hmm. high risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you have to apply those to the numbers. It's the same thing when some somebody goes to one of these nothing down real estate crap and they go, well, I can rent the house for $1,000 and my payment's only $500. i am going to cash flow $500. <laughs> well, let me, let me tell you how that works in the end, okay? If that's the case, you're going to break even uh-huh. with vacancy, with non-payment, with suing to evict them, with fixing the repairs beyond the deposits, with fixing the repairs that just happened to a house, the heat and air goes out, the Mm -hmm. roof leaks, paying the insurance, paying the taxes, messing with it. You you got a $500 cash flow? No, you don't. Mm. You're breaking even. This is what people don't grasp. I have a $500 cash flow. What that means is you don't know what the flip you're doing. Mm. You have no knowledge of how real estate really works. Mm. My homes and properties of all kinds are 100% paid for, and I swear... I wonder if some of them are going to cash flow then. Wow. You know? I mean, it's unbelievable. And you do no, you do no Airbnb and, no, no, and, and no, wouldn't even no, get into it. No, no, Winston Cruz runs all that stuff. Rachel's husband, he would shoot me if I proposed Airbnb. It would make his life miserable. And, and But why is that? Miser- well, the hassle it's just factor too much. Yeah, that's versus what the risk. It's not worth the risk. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. There you go. That's, that's what I want people to it. get. Like, just it, pay, pay cash for a normal rental, Right. Yeah, that's what I would Why do. even fool with But if with you the... want to do it, you probably could make more money. Mm-hmm. Net, net. You would make more money. If, if you, you can would. get it rolling. If you have a reasonable property, you'll make more money doing an Airbnb than you would on than you would renting it out. Mm-hmm. But, but not just some guy off the streets who thinks net, they're net. just going to. Yeah, net, net, you would do that. But e- even if you don't know what you're doing, and you don't know if you're how to be a landlord, mm-hmm. net, net, you'd make more money. But you, what you need to perceive is the extra hassle level. It is real. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with a lot of human beings. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show.
Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Speaking of co-hosts, Ken Coleman is, uh, has launched a, an exciting new event, or we have launched an exciting new event with Ken Coleman called Career Breakthrough. Whether you feel stuck in your current job because of fear and doubt, or you have an idea you want to pursue, but you don't know how to get there, or you just need someone to tell you you can do it, you need to come to this. Ken Coleman is the guy, and at his event, Career Breakthrough, is just for you. You can join Ken live in person this spring for an event that will give you clarity, confidence, and courage to do the work you were born to do. Ken's going to take questions, interact with the audience, and uh, talk to you guys. And every ticket comes with his Get to Clear assessment as well. Uh, the career breakthrough is going to be Kansas City, Missouri. April 20, coming up quick here. Chicago, Illinois, May 16. Atlanta, Georgia, May 18. And Dallas, Texas, May 23rd. Tickets start at just $50. These are small events. Only going to be three or 400 people. So if you want an intimate interaction with Ken and an audience, to be able to get questions answered and actually take you where you need to go, get signed up for these. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. Al is with us in Bethesda. Hey, Al, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. Certainly. How can we help? Yeah, my question is, how would you advise my wife and I to determine the best high-growth industries when considering a career change? Um, well, high growth is a good thing to look at. Uh, I also would look at uh, how you're wired and what's going to make you smile. I don't care if it's high growth, if you hate it every single day, there's not enough money on the planet to make you happy then. No, that definitely makes sense. I, I am actually reading Ken Coleman's book from paycheck to purpose. Good. Um, but we're, yeah, we're just really just trying to get all avenues and information to talk to different people about different careers, what we could do. Mm -hmm. She's a CPA, and I do research for the Department of Defense, and we've both been working about 12 to 13, 14 years, something like that. So, And uh, I we just both had a realization being in middle management that is, wow, the, the folks in upper management just seems like they do have the burden and responsibility and leadership, but... Certainly, it feels like we're working more than perhaps they are. So we're just kind of looking at each other. We're both 33 and just saying, like, are we really going to do this for the next 20 to 30 years? Mm. So. Have you done the career assessment that Ken offers to see where you're, have, what you're wired to do? I have not. Where, where's, that, where's that assessment, if, if you don't mind? You, can, you can go to his... Or, uh, website and find it. Well, you find it in the Ramsey Solutions yep. store, RamseySolutions.com. We'll give you a couple of them uh, so you guys can take it, and that'll be helpful. Um, I think one of the things you're going to find, Al, is that you're both detail people, right? Yes, yeah. very much so. And I'm not. So if you put me into a detail <laughs> thing, it would be like, uh, as a friend of mine says, leukemia to my soul. Oh, gosh. You know, but, yeah, no, thank you. I, if I had to do what your wife does every day, I would, you know, I, oh, I want to read the reports that she does, but I don't want to create them, you know, so uh, from a CPA perspective. Now, here's the thing. It might be that being a CPA is not a problem. It might be how she's doing it. Maybe start your own practice mm -hmm. where the sky's the limit. And then do the same work, but for yourself and make a lot more money. Maybe that's, maybe it's that simple. Uh, in your case, research is not something you necessarily start up on your own. Maybe it is. I don't know what field you're in, but, um, but whatever you move towards needs to have lots of detail. Uh, like for instance, I'm not going to recommend, and it's not necessary. Well, it is actually probably a pretty growth oriented thing right this second, um, is event planner. Okay where it's different every day, it's constant change, uh, there's a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of human beings running around with drama, <laughs> trying to get the event off the ground, whether it's the crew putting in the, the, the sound system or the, 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 the people running the event center or the client, then you're not doing that one, okay? That one don't fit you, okay? It would be, you'd be miserable for you. So, you know, you're going to find those things out from this career assessment. But then I, it, it can be that what you described to me was not necessarily a career path problem. It was the where you're doing it is the problem. Yeah, yeah I think you might be on to something. 
there. So, yeah, yeah, we'll give you that. You guys take that. But then I would look around and go, OK, um, you know, technology is, is obviously anything that falls under that bucket. And that's a really large bucket. Uh, you know, a guy like you, if you want to learn programming or you want to get into that field, uh, there's a, a lot of stuff that's booming there. Uh, any, anything around that word, assuming you develop some skills in that area. Uh, which you could do pretty quickly with your natural bent, is my guess. You might go to code school. You might do uh, something else. You might study security, uh, you know, digital security ap- applications, and uh, just a huge, huge booming. It's a gold gold mine, gold rush right now. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that's for you. But I would not pick it based on, you know, you're reading that from Ken already. I would not pick it based on only on um, – you know, what's booming yeah and what you can make money with that I, don't, be... I don't want to go to a dentist that chose being a dentist because there's a lot of money in it exactly i they they uh, you're not going to work I'm the too same big way a coward and i they don't they don't i want to cho- go to a dentist that chose it as an opportunity to serve mm-hmm. in the medical arts and they're a compassionate person because i'm a coward oh yeah <laughs> well we've all- We've all dealt with people who it's like, wow, you you need to go on and do something that gives you some joy. We, <laughs> we, we've all encountered those people where it's like, why are you doing this every day? You're clearly miserable. Is it just for the paycheck? I mean, you don't definitely don't want to be one of those people. Um, yeah, that would be, as you say, the tail wagging the dog. So, John is with us in Modesto, California. Hi, John. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? So um, we took out a HELOC uh, last year uh, to make some upgrades around the house and also to put a practice baseball field in our backyard. Well, the HELOC, we, we under-budgeted, so we ran out of the HELOC, and we still need probably another five or 6000 to get How the much did payable. you spend on your field of dreams? <laughs> if you build it, he will come. <laughs> About uh, about forty thousand of the HELOC went towards the ball field. About thirty thousand went towards a well and pump that we needed to put in anyway for our residents. What do you so make a year? We are. I'm sorry. What do you make a year? Two hundred thousand between my wife and I. Okay. And your question is how to come up with the last five thousand to finish. Well, yeah, we're really hot and heavy in step two. We've already tackled about 25,000 in debt within the last 30 to 40 days. And so it's hard. How, how long before step two, how long before baby step two is done? At your current uh, About rate. another eight months. About okay. another eight is months. Is there a problem waiting until next spring to finish the ball field? I mean, well, tactically, technically, is there a problem? I'm not talking about emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. That's the big, that's the hard part, right? Um, I think we'd earn about $2,000 per month renting it out, Um, but it would take another 6,000 or so to finish it. And each month we have about $4,000 left over from, from income to pay towards that. Who are you renting a baseball diamond to? They they are in high demand out here. Um, It's hard to find fields to practice on. Huh. So who's going to pay you? Like little kids? Whether it's, no, whether it's a youth, uh, a lot of youth teams are open Youth to teams pay uh, $2,000 to rent a field? Wow. No, if I rented out 20 nights a week, 100 bucks for a few hours. Okay. Uh, if you want to work the cash flow in to finish it, that's fine. I have, it's the, the first time I've ever taken a call on a baseball field. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. If you build um, it, he will come. Whew, man, that's what came to mind. <laughs> I hope this is not. I hope your projections are accurate, I and do you too. haven't spent this money, and you got to get it all paid off now. This goes in the debt snowball, by the way. Uh, twenty days. Of, twenty days. Of- maybe not. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live 
from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. That's 888 888- Eight two five five two two five. Angela starts off this hour in Minneapolis. Hi, Angela. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Yeah, so I'm actually calling on behalf of my mother-in-law. Um, unfortunately, we lost our father-in-law about a year ago, and now she's in kind of a tough financial situation because for their retirement, they had invested in someone else's life insurance and unfortunately put most of their money in it and it hasn't paid out yet. Oh, my. Have you ever have you ever they, heard of something like sure, that? Sure, they bought a viatical. Yeah, I don't. And she has so little information that she probably doesn't even know what it's called. Um, and I'm... We're just, yeah, I just feel at a loss for words. So they yeah. do how, have how old is your mother-in-law? She is 66 or 67. Okay. So retired, just retired. She yeah. was a nurse. But um, she, she was, was not nurse. involved. She's not business savvy, was not involved in the d- decisions of the money in the household much? Not really. Do we have um, a file on this issue? Any kind of contacts on this issue? Yes. The problem is I keep telling her to call and make sure it's even a legit investment. And she kind of refuses to do that and just hopes it's going to turn out okay. Okay. How can we help you? Yeah. So the problem is they invested money and now it's grown to... I'm, I don't know all the details. So I'm just guessing they put in two hundred to three hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. If they get it back, it's about five hundred and fifty thousand. That's if they get it back. The problem okay. is the first ten years they didn't have to pay in, um, and now that it's been over ten years, they had to start paying in. Last year she paid in eighty thousand, and this year by tax time she has to pay in a hundred thousand to keep this investment going. Oh, my. And they have to wait till this person passes away in order to get the money back. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's very unusual to have them staged like this. Okay, so let's start with this, okay? The concept mm-hmm. of a viatical works like this. Um, the beneficiary, let's say that I had a life insurance policy. My wife is the beneficiary, Sharon, and... Um, it was, let's call it a million dollar policy. When I die, my wife, the, the beneficiary is supposed to get a million dollars. If they want money beforehand, the person that holds the policy, they can sell the position of the beneficiary. It's called a viatical. And uh, it's discounted deeply. And so if they put 200000 into one policy on one person, uh, this is probably a multi million dollar policy. Okay. Yes. And um, uh, you said it's only supposed to pay out five hundred thousand. Um, she thinks. She thinks. She mm. thinks again. Yeah. And now that her father-in-law has passed away, he's the one who, unfortunately, this was their retirement money. Okay. The, the only other money she has, and unfor- unfortunately, is she has money in stocks. Yeah. And now, um, and it's only about two hundred thousand, and then. She, and that's the only other retirement money she has besides Social Security. Okay. Well, first, and let's just cover a couple things. Uh, your, your angst inside of you on this weird thing uh, is good because it's accurate. This should not have been done. It's a horrible place for people to put the majority of their money like this. Absolutely mm-hmm. horrible for multiple reasons. Obviously, we're waiting on someone to die, which is just weird, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, But that's what life insurance companies do every day. They wait on people to die and hope they don't for a while, and they make more money on them. That's how, you know, so it's all weird, but uh, awkward. But but, uh, in addition to that, it's it's, it's a young industry that is full of uh, scam, full of fraud. And if it's not a scam or fraud... A lot of them are poorly structured, and the statistical mm-hmm. analysis, the actuarial analysis sucks. 
there are some legitimate companies that aren't scams that are doing it, but it's nothing I would ever put a dime in because it's just not got enough track record that even if you could get past the awkwardness, the weirdness of what you're doing, um, then even then it's not anything I would put money into. So, uh, so what to do now is we've got, Mm -hmm. first we've got to figure out if it's a scam. Second thing we've got to figure out, is there any exit prior to any exit strategy prior to death? And then the third thing is uh, all of this has to happen because your mother-in-law actually cares. She doesn't care right now. She's ashamed or she's afraid that it's bad. And she's like, if she puts her hands over her ears and closes her eyes and goes, la, 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 it's all going to go away and be okay. And that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. So who's going to talk to her and get permission to talk to this company in writing? (laughs) You or your husband? Or one of our siblings. Yeah. 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 And it's almost like we have to force it. Yeah. Yeah. We well, we're only, the we only gotta, reason we're forcing it is well, for her own good, because I'm afraid she's gotten scammed. I mean, and our, the only other option is you walk away from it all. I mean, I think... No, like, I'm not walking away from it because she refuses to face it. No, I mean, she might have to walk away from it and just say it's a total loss. Well, if it's a scam, she will. Yeah. And if she has yep. to put money in that she doesn't have, she will. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, if she because signed if up she for a contract in. she can't fulfill, she may lose the whole stinking thing. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know what she signed up for. I know. So the first step mm-hmm. is getting her shook out of her fog and handing a piece of paper that gives permission for your husband, her son, if I'm understanding this right, um, yep. to, uh, to, to call these people or someone in the family that has some business acumen to find out what the flip is going on, what these people yep. have gotten themselves into. Um, it's a bad product because, at best, if it's not a scam, it's a young industry that's poorly run. The best of the best of them are okay, but nothing that makes me want to jump up and down and get involved in this weirdness. Yeah. Second question, really quick, if you have time. If she just, if we find out this is a bad investment, can she live off of 200000 and Social Security for the rest of her life? That depends on what she's willing to spend. (laughs) What's it take? What's Mm -hmm. her monthly budget? I mean, she has her house paid off, her car is paid off. Mm -hmm. So she's just paying taxes on her house. And insurance and food and electricity. How much is the Social Mm -hmm. Security? She's making less than she thought after her husband passed, so about $2,300 a month. Yeah. Well, $20,000 if it produced 10% would be $20,000 a year. Or two hundred thousand would produce twenty thousand a year, so a couple, another couple grand a month, give or take. Um, so if she can live on three or four grand, she can make it, probably, if you invest the money wisely this time that's remaining. Um, but yeah, you guys need to get to the bottom of this. Um, she she's ashamed that she doesn't understand. She's ashamed that she feels like in the air she may have gotten scammed, and she may have. Uh-huh. So. So in general, what would the Ramsey Show say about viaticals? There is a portion of them that are uh, on the up and up, and there's no portion of them I would ever do. This is the Ramsey Show. was the last time you were excited about Monday? What if instead of waking up exhausted, you felt exhilarated? Uh, You can't wait to get to work because another day to do what you love doing. In a world where the bare minimum Monday, oh, that makes me want to throw up, has taken the place of quiet quitting, it's clear that people are craving meaningful work. Yeah, it's part of it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, th- th- this is why career expert and Ramsey personality Ken Coleman created the Get Clear Assessment to help you discover your top talents, passions, and a clear mission statement that will help you find the work the world needs you to do. And this week only, the assessment is $10 off. The sale ends at midnight on Friday. So get this deal right now. 
Go to RamseySolutions.com slash get clear. Chris is with us in Seattle. Hey, Chris, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay. So um, the question. I have about $100,000 in, in cash, um, owe about $97,000 in two real estate properties. Um, and the question is, should I take that cash and pay them off? The hesitation and the backstory. Um, these are real estate properties that I kind of got entangled. I got myself entangled into this. So I'm taking responsibility for this. I got into these deals to flip these back in 2007 with uh, um, someone who I knew real well, trusted, and they had done one of these personally. Came up to me and said, "Hey, you know what? We should do this. You know, it will be it will be a great it will be a great deal. You can make some quick easy money." I was naive. It's 15 years ago. Um, so did that. Then we had the crash of 2008. Uh, then became an on a, on a reluctant landlord. Um, and over the years, just kind of struggled with managing those and eventually got myself further entangled by signing these over to a sort of management company. They put it into a trust um, and they essentially manage the tenants, collect the rent, they pay the mortgage, they, they do make the mortgage payment, they handle all repairs and everything. However, I am still the mortgage holder with my original mortgage company. So I have liability, but I am not going to really get the benefit if that real estate property was sold today and made a profit. This um, company will essentially take all of that. But what, um, and in exchange for that, they essentially handle everything. So the, to my original question, what, the thing that keeps me up at night right now, and they, I've had no problems with them, um, for the record. They have made all the payments. They have handled everything. Um, but the thing that keeps me up at night right now or where the anxiety is coming from is I have this liability. Um, it is if, wherever, if I went to go take a loan out today, I will be asked questions questions about that and i have to go through the explanation of what they are what's currently going on here's the proof that things are being paid and everything is kept up to date because i i I collect those on a regular basis so the thought crossed my mind that i should um does the uh, does the trust pay the payment on the property that you're talking about paying off yes that's correct what happens if you pay it off and there's not a payment anymore do you receive that well, so that was that was my question. The question was, does it make sense to take my hundred thousand dollars in cash, essentially become the only mortgage holder, refinance these properties, so that I no longer have these on my credit report, and it's not something that I'm carrying? So, any well, longer, my my question is, my question is, under the terms of the crap you signed up for, yep, will they pay you the payment that they used to pay to the bank if you pay the bank off? I don't have a good answer to that. And well, I obviously, if you get zero from them as a result of paying it off, you don't pay it off. Yes. But that's the culmination of the second bad deal you did on these properties. Yes. Um, so you gave up ownership of the properties, and they wrapped it into a trust so there was not a due-on-sale clause because they didn't want to pay off the mortgages. That is correct. But you don't have, if you pay off the mortgages, it doesn't increase, does that increase your equity position? No, because they're taking all the equity, right? That is correct. Um, I guess. You're giving them an extra $100,000 by paying the loan off, aren't you? If, so I guess this is my question because I am some, I am still somewhat naive and I'm, and I'm beginning to do some research here when the thought came, but I figured I've gone through SPU, which is kind of how I started getting all of this stuff cleaned up. And I figured I'd make the phone call in the event that I essentially refinance this loan where, whether it's an LLC or whatever. It's not, it's not a refinance, honey. It's just, you're going to pay it off. Okay. Okay. And then the question is twofold. Under this trust agreement that you have signed over the property rights, if you pay off the mortgage, do they protect that and you get that back at resale when they sell it? Because you've given up the equity, you said. But will they take the, uh, will they give you the $100,000 at sale? And will they pay you payments until then? Got it. Okay. Because so you, because otherwise you're, you're now, you know, uh, they're, they're getting ahead by the payments and by the hundred thousand dollars that they now added to their, um, 
you know, their equity if we don't do this. So I don't know what you've signed up for. It's a weird deal that you've gotten yourself into. I think I know why they did it. I think they did it to avoid the due on sale clause of the of the deed of trust. But um, that is correct. Yeah, it's one of these um, nothing down real estate crap weekend seminars that got that these guys went to. They have no money, but they thought they'd come in and run the property for you, and they make all the money, and made you think that you were somehow protected, and you're not. Wow. So, um, because if they just walk away, you're right back where you were. That is correct. Yeah, except you don't have the property in your name anymore. Yeah, the property is in the trust. Yeah. So you've lost control of the property. All you've got is the uh, all you've got is the liability. So I don't know. I mean, I I do not want to give them a hundred thousand dollars more. Agreed. So we need to make sure that you know it, that you get something documented with them that they will pay that out to you uh, upon sale of the property if you reduce it. If they will pay that out to you and they will pay you payments in the meantime, then yes, I would pay it off and get rid of the liability. That sounds terrible. This is like terrible, terrible bad idea hour. I mean, no wonder he, I mean, he sounded like he was just wired, man. No wonder. That's crazy stuff. Okay. Um, let, let's kind of pause a second and talk about a concept. The concept is this. From him and uh, from a caller in a different segment, um, mm -hmm. depending on how you're watching this or listening, you'll be catching it at a different time. But... Um, about viaticals buying out life insurance policies. Um, I have done dumber things than both of those two things. Every time I did, it was due to, most of the time, due to being desperate mm -hmm. or being greedy. If you're desperate, it, right after you get desperate, you're going to get broke. And that's his thing. Okay, he got in a bad deal with a partner, 2007, horrible timing on real estate. Law, you know, the guy, then he had to get that guy gone, but he ends up with the property, and the property's killing him, and he's not making any money on it. So these other guys will come in. They'll, they'll, we'll pay the payments, but we get all the equity, and, and we'll send you the rents, or we'll keep the rents, or whatever the arrangement was. And you have to deed your property into the name of a trust that those other guys control so you've now lost the ownership of the property, but the mortgage is still in your name. You still have the liability. That's what he did. And that was a man that was wow. desperate. Yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, because that's like known as a deal that sucks. Yeah. And so, um, and I've seen that deal pitched as a way to get a property for nothing down. Just take over their payments and manage it for them. But you got to get it into your name and you make the equity later. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of those nothing down weekend real estate things or those tic-tac things that they're doing that's going around. Uh, I mean, this nothing down real estate comes around about every 10 or 15 years again. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, a whole bunch of people lose their butt. And then uh, a whole a whole fresh batch of young people have to come along to be dumb enough to do it again. Well, they're here. Yeah, it's a fresh batch. Fresh batch of MBAs that are 34 years old. It's a fresh batch. <laughs> Ugh. This is the Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Jerry and Christy are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing Hi, great. Dave. Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? <laughs> Fort Worth. Ah, oh, welcome to Tennessee. Good to have you. And how much debt have you two paid off? $863,288 in 36 months. Whoa! And your range of income during that time? Uh, started out at 165 plus bonus of 80,000, up to 185 with a bonus of 180,000. Oh, wow! Big shovel. Okay, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, construction in the oil field business. Mm-hmm. 
and I manage our properties. Okay, all right. And so, uh, what kind of debt was your uh, eight hundred and sixty-three thousand? David, it was like a CVS receipt. <laughs> <laughs> we had eighteen line items and uh, credit cards, eighty-five k loans, fifty-four k. Some of those loans were because. I never paid interest on credit cards, so once the 0% thing ran out, I would get a refinance thing. And then auto and ATV, 25, second house, 357, and land, 342. Wow. wow. Okay. How long you two been married? Since 2019. Okay. And uh, so... No, that- no, 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 no. 2009. 2009. <laughs> and we, we had okay. nothing in 2007. It just went by so fast. Yeah. It's just been so good. It went by fast. And we had zero at 2007 when we met. Okay. So in 2019 was about three years ago. 20 was three years ago. So uh, that's about the time you started all of this. What happened that put you guys in gear? You all went after it. Well, it started a few years prior to that. We were both oil filled in the six figures, doing really good, except the company I worked for was going through financial problems. Uh, ultimately went bankrupt and so there were routine layoffs and if you drove a company truck and I did then when you got to work however many taxis were lined up that's how many company truck people were going that day Whoa. and it was very stressful but I, I, I survived it little did we know and we were like 400 in debt then little did we know that I'm through the stress wagon of my company getting laid off he gets laid off <laughs> wow and that was we still gained a lot more debt after that. But then in October of 2019, I listened to Total Money Makeover, and I listened to the book in one trip coming and going, and I came home and told him about it. So, Jerry, what did she say when she came home? said, we're going to try this. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a question. It was, it was, it was a, a statement. statement. <laughs> it was a statement. We're going to do this. You're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I said, okay, we'll what, try it. Whatever. we got to do something different. we got to do something different. Yeah. So the 863 was, uh, half of that was mortgages. Yes. Including your personal home? Well, that's a funny story. So when we bought the property, we bought 117 acres at the time. Mm-hmm. But we actually sold another house to buy this property. Mm-hmm. So we decided, well, we're going to count uh, survey off four acres and the house. Mm-hmm. And we paid cash for that. Mm-hmm. So nobody could ever take that away from us. Mm-hmm. All we had to do is worry about taxes in. Oh. And if something ever happened to our jobs, we could always just sell everything else, and we still had our house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that piece of land surrounding it, you also paid off. Yes. Yeah. So wow. kind of like paying off your house. Yes. But you had already carved it out and replatted it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Way to go. That's I like something. that. Wow. And, yeah, we've since you know, added to where we're like 150 acres there. We love land. We love real estate. Okay, y'all did not. Did you? You must have sold something, because your well, income is showing yeah. three hundred, and you paid off over three hundred a month a year. Mm-hmm. Well, we sold the second house, so we had a lot oh, of. Oh, you equity. sold the three fifty seven. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. That yeah. ma- that makes the numbers. And work. we sold okay. a, we sold a cattle herd. We sold implements, and then every bonus went to the every dollar budget, and then. So what did the herd and the implements bring? Uh, probably the herd was like around thirty-five thousand. The implements maybe twenty, thirty. Wow. So about fifty more. Yeah. So four hundred and some change yeah. came from selling the st- big stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Of the eight sixty-three. Right. And, and then you cash flow the rest of it in thirty-six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. How'd that feel? How'd that feel emotionally having to sell off all that? Uh, the, for him, the implements, uh-huh. he'd rather lose an arm or a leg than to sell anything, any heavy equipment or any implement. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the cattle herd was really hard for me. Yeah. Yeah. That was tough. But but uh, we we had a goal. We knew. And then I loved the second house. That was tough. Now, uh, will you rebuild the herd now with cash? We, we have. We've you started. already have. We yeah. started. Okay. So we started. And the same thing with the implements, only better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Better, better toys this time. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So it's worth that's it. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a herd, but the toys. <laughs> and that's what we, we looked at it when we started this. We said, hey, this is a short-term deal. We're going to get it done. We're going to do it. And then after that, then we can do whatever we want to do. We can buy exactly. whatever we want to do. All we got to do is Live is like save no up one and else. And later, we can live and give like mm. no one else. I just like the way you guys speak. Everything is very, we're going to do this. This is what we're going to do. This is what's next. There's no question about it. And I yeah. like, that's how you get stuff done. Yeah. Well, well, what was tough with that second house is that house was but not only 100% mortgage. I remember her telling me, oh, we can 100% mortgage plus all your closing costs. Because it was a private credit union that I had dealt with for 30 years and had a very good record. So they, uh, it, that 
it's scary having a in an oil field town yeah. to have a house and yeah. five acres with 100 percent mortgage plus you know you don't know when it gets cyclical and what did it bring like four 425 yeah. okay so you got out of it clean yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and then we still had some well yeah a little bit of equity yeah, yeah. so that all went to it yeah wow. way to go you guys how's yeah. it feel to be free great yeah it's fantastic just, it's still it's, unreal like when we ever go back no 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 it's just no way and we thought, change the way you feel at work the, 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 when the work's volatile does it change the way you feel at work <laughs> oh yeah you know right now somebody says something at work and say i don't have to be here guys <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have i have my retirement already set up i have a house my place is already i don't have any bet debts I can walk home tomorrow. Yeah. It's, it's not going to hurt me a bit. I love we'll, that. we'll work this out. We'll only, work this the out. The only reason I'm working now is she wants a new house and a new barn. As soon as I have the cash to build both of those, I'm gone. Oh, mm -hmm. just like that. Just okay. like that. That's it. All right. There we go. Well, we'll do other stuff. One more year. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Go ahead and turn in your notice. <laughs> <laughs> but... It, but I was a 0% interest queen, mm -hmm. and I always thought, well, if it's 0% interest, that's free. And the and one book, the audio book, just changed it. Total Money Makeover. That was it. Yes. Yeah. You know, I had heard about you on AM radio stations, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, I didn't. we didn't believe it. We really didn't believe it. And even today, it's hard to really believe. This is a huge number that we did, you know. Yeah, 863000 yeah. in but 36 what, months. But what's dumb is that that bank would loan us 100%. So my mm. quote is... With debt, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Right on. And they they'll loan it. you more than they should, and you should. Yeah, and we were exactly. paying thirty eight hundred a month in interest. It was just crazy, but you know, a lot of people will say, "Well, I could do that with that big of a shovel, right?" But mm -hmm. the bigger the shovel, the bigger the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, you turned loose of some things that meant something to you. Yeah. And you turned loose of some stuff you were going, whew, glad you got rid of that one, yeah. both. Uh, but you turned loose of a bunch of stuff as part of the equation. And there's something, when visually a, a house leaves, cattle leave, implements leave, yeah. you see that there's something happens transforming in your heart when that stuff right in front of your face starts leaving mm -hmm. in order to accomplish the goal. That's a permanent change. You will not go back in debt. No. Yeah. It was not easy for you because of the emotions of it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I just want to tell you thank you so much because I had spent my whole life having good income and shuffling money. Yeah. And not really knowing until I was doing my income taxes how much I'd spent over the year. Wow. And, and well, we're proud of you. You guys are impressive. Well, we, we got a copy. Uh, we got the Live and Give bundle for you, the Baby Steps Millionaires book. You're there already, I'm sure, with the value of that book. land. Yeah. And uh, the Total Money Makeover book as well, and the Financial Peace University membership. Use them or give them. They're for you guys to say thank you for coming in, telling your story. You're impressive people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you so much. So proud of you, heroes. Well done. Very, very well done. Jerry and Christy, Fort Worth, Texas. 863 <laughs> paid off in 36 months, <laughs> making about 300. I'll just around it with all these mm -hmm. bonuses and stuff coming in and they sold a bunch of stuff count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three one, two, two one. one we're, we're debt-free debt yeah <laughs> that's how it's done this is the ramsey show Marshall Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. And uh, thank you for all of you that have joined us recently. Our numbers are way up. We appreciate that. If you guys want to help us, if we've been a blessing to you, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is you can subscribe where you uh, listen or view the show. 
For instance, if you're YouTube or a podcast, just hit the subscribe button. You can share the show. Uh, a lot of a lot of these uh, services, Spotify or whatever, you can share the link. You can share whatever. There's a share button where you can send it to your friends. Let them know to listen, and uh, we'd love to have that. If you're just listening on talk radio, then just share it. Just tell your friends, hey, here's where I listen to this show. You need to do that. And you can leave us where you're able to. You can leave us a five-star review. Uh, one stars don't help. Mama said if you ain't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So just, uh, you know, fill out those five-star reviews. Those three things really help the algorithms. Uh, last week, we were the number uh, 16 podcast in the world. Whoop, whoop. Out of, uh, in Apple, out of, uh, out of about two to three million podcasts that are out there. And uh, that's because of you guys. Thank you for that. And uh, our team says we should be in the top 10. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good at 16, but we'll take we'll take moving on up if you guys share it and uh, move <laughs> us along and we get more and more and more listeners. Uh, we're, we're up there fighting with the big dogs on the porch anyway. So thank you. Thank you for that. We appreciate you. AJ is with us. AJ is in Kansas City. Hi, AJ. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, just give a little backstory now, real quick. My wife was involved in the, an accident in her van. Uh, somebody ran a red light and totaled our van. So that leads me to my question is, should I use some of our emergency fund to add cash to purchase a better used car? How's your wife doing? She is healing. She's fine overall, but she's, she's got some healing to do. Thankfully, it. It wasn't. It could have been a lot worse, but it wasn't. Thankfully. <laughs> wow. Do you guys have any debt? We don't. We uh, got debt free um, right before our twins were born uh, two years ago. Okay. Uh, right after, two months after the twins were born, we paid off our. What What was your uh, car, What's your car worth? What, how much money are you going to get? The, the uh, we already we just got the check. I settled on that. We got nine thousand. For eight eight thousand five hundred dollars. That's that's including the sales tax. Mm-hmm. Okay, she got medical coverage as well. You're going to get for her injuries. Yeah, the, medic, the medical stuff will all be just fine. She wasn't at fault, so we're mm-hmm. we're dealing with all that. Still. That's a we're separate kind of number, right? It. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's all separate from it. I'm just trying to get us a van right now. Right now, I'm using my mother-in-law's van. Yeah. Okay. What do you have set aside? Just as, uh, just the emergency have, funds, all. I guess I'm, I'm saying sorry. three three or six months do you have set aside? We we have thirty six K in our emergency fund. What's your household income? Household income is one thirty five. Okay. All right. Well, in general, uh an upgrade in vehicle is not considered an emergency. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but um if you want to use some of your emergency fund because you're saying uh I think we're stable and 30 is plenty, we might have had it overfunded, um, then that's fine. But if you feel like you're vulnerable to an emergency because of that, then you should not do that. Okay. Because this is not an did, upgrade. Upgrade's not an emergency. But you make a lot of money to be driving a $9,000 van. Mm-hmm. It was paid off, man. It was good. I know, I, I know, but I'm just saying I, I, that you were probably, <laughs> you probably one of your next goals was to cash flow an upgrade, wasn't it? Yes, we have we have nineteen thousand dollars in cash, and then I still have a car to trade in as well. That I think will give me like eight or nine. So I was looking at like. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Like, Where's the thirty six thousand? So the thirty thirty six thousand dollars our emergency fund. We were cash flowing a new car because I wanted to get my wife in a better van. Now mm-hmm. that we are doing better. So uh, the nineteen is separate than the thirty six. Oh, well, why do you need to you use go. your emergency fund? You have uh, nine plus nineteen is twenty eight. Uh, yeah. What did you want to spend? Car market is just crazy. No, we it's were, not. So what I'm looking at, I can, like, I'm looking at like a twenty six thousand dollar van that has like eighty five thousand miles. Well, on you've it, got like twenty eight. Like, you got twenty eight thousand dollars. Is the yeah, nineteen include the nine? Uh, that you just got from the yeah, insurance okay. company. Yes, it does. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. okay. Oh. Yes, yeah, sorry. So we okay. were in K and cash. We just got nine for her van, so that's what I said nineteen. Okay. And then I have so you have nineteen in cash, and the car. other car is that you're willing to trade in is a is, was a third car. Correct. Yeah. And it's worth what? Yeah, I think eight or nine. Is that not enough for you? It is. It is. That's why I just if I if I spend a little bit more if if 
That's, I, what, like 2,000 dude, more? Dude, you got enough I, car. You're moving from 9 to 28. That's, okay. that's enough. That's what I thought you were going to say, but I yeah. want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing that on principle, not on math, okay? Yeah, I know. I need to eat some humble pie. Yeah, I mean, this is you, – you, you're, you're not moving from 9 to 14. You're moving from 9 to 28. <laughs> you're, you're 3Xing your car. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 that's fine. And then if you want to move up later and pay cash, as long as your total of your vehicles doesn't equal more than half your annual income, I'll be fine with that. But no, you don't need to hit your emergency fund. You don't have a need to. And that's a good discipline factor for you. That's true. To say in the true. middle of an emotional thing, my wife was injured. This was a horrible wreck. Mm-hmm. Uh, the van is the kid hauler. Mm-hmm. It's where we haul the twins. Yeah. This is, uh, there's a lot of emotion around this, and it's a good practice to say, okay, the emotion that I'm feeling around getting a better car is not an emergency. Yeah, that's 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 a very good point, Dave. I mean, if he's like a thousand fifteen hundred off from where he wants to be, I mean, can he not just cash flow that little bit or whatever he's been doing? Can he do it another month and have the money for it? I I wouldn't pull from the emergency fund for that. Yeah, it's not another. I mean, drive the mother in law's van for another month. I wouldn't yeah. do that. I'd just buy a dad gum car. I would too, but for you know. twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars in pay cash. That's what I would do. Yeah, okay. Took a little bit to get down into the numbers there. <laughs> yeah. They were uh, some he, of some of those were hiding behind the barn. He's got his eye on a specific vehicle. Yes, and it's he a does. Specific he's got a car price. fever. Yeah, he's got, go take a cold shower. It helps with car <laughs> fever. Car fever will get you every time. Lori's yeah. with us in Los Angeles. Hi, Lori. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. It is a thrill to talk with you, Dave and Jade. <laughs> and um, I today I am happy to be making this call, uh, having learned what I have, and I'm in the position I am because I've been following the uh, Ramsey. Thank way. you. Hey, we're so, short on time. Go yeah. straight to your question, kiddo. Okay, I've got a situation I've never, ever heard. I'm very lopsided. I'm nearly 62. I've got over about $1.1 million in equity in a home I own that's been rental property. I, don't, I have very little in a retirement account, and um, I am trying to decide going forward what will be the best step for me in terms of uh, moving back into the house, uh, I, it's kind of a, I've got a little bit of a, you know, more complicated situation, but um, I'm really lopsided. That's what I've never heard addressed in any of your shows. And so, so you have, you have a lot of equity and no money. Yes. Yeah. That would okay. be it. Yeah. Then you may need to move, you may need to move this property because what you need to end up with, Lori, is a paid for property and a nest egg to live on by the time you get to 70. And just moving back into this house doesn't do that, I don't think. And there, we, there may be more to your story because sh- we're short on time, as I said. But um, it sounds like that um, that this property's left over from some uh-huh. other stuff in your life. Yeah, because she's living somewhere now. I wonder why she can't stay where she's at and, and sell off this property. Yeah, well, she can. She's renting, though, probably, uh. it sounded like. So, yeah, running out of time here. And, uh, yeah, we're out of time here. <laughs> okay <laughs> or not oh my gosh okay so um yeah that's what i would do here that's what i'd I would get do. the property sold and uh well, <laughs> and, and i would get into something where i can pay for something out with all that equity and yeah. have a nest egg left over maybe a condo she could buy yeah this is the ramsey show Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Live from 
the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Frank is in Detroit. Hey, Frank, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Um, great to be on here. Thanks for taking my call. I um, found you probably only about six months ago. I don't know how, and I'm so glad I did. Well, we're honored. I listen to you every day. We? We're honored yeah, to have you, sir. Every day when I'm listen to you every day when I'm running and walking and working out, and then I preach at the dinner table to the kids all day. But my question is, uh, we started getting this, you know, we get this bill every year, and my wife opened it and said, um, here it is. It's that insurance thing. I go, oh, that's that thing Dave talks about. It's the whole, the, the, whole, the whole life insurance. I said, we don't want that. So I looked into it. Gave them a call. They told me it's currently worth twenty eight thousand in cash, and my death benefit seventy five. If I learn from you enough, I could take that twenty eight, put it in some good growth mutual funds. Every seven years of a double, ten years, I'll already have the benefit of the seventy five thousand. Am I thinking right? Well, you also need to make sure you're replacing it with term life, and you need to make sure you've got the term life policy in place before you cash out the whole life. Do you have, do you have our, yeah, other well, life insurance in place already? Well, that was the other thing I thought from um, watching and learning. I, I actually retired, and I'm at the point now where I think I'm self-insured. Oh. I don't. If I pass away, um, my pension actually goes up for my wife because uh, I took a reduced benefit when um, I can put her on there. And then our LLC brings in um, a yearly income, also about uh, sixty thousand a year. That would remain the same. So I'm thinking at this point, if something happens to me. You know, she's she's fine. Is the pension no, bills, no? You know, no debt. Is the pension the only retirement account you have, or is there? Do you have some IRAs or anything like that anywhere laying around? Yeah, yeah, I have. I have my pension, which uh, luckily I was a government employee, and I I, mean, I don't apologize for it. But they promised this years ago. But <laughs> I put thirty three years in at work, uh-huh. and um, I get lifetime health care included in that for me and my wife. Good. Um, so the bottom line is she's she, you, she's okay with no life insurance. Correct. Okay. Correct. Then yes, just cancel yeah. cancel this and invest it. You're exactly right. I love that for you. Okay, way to go, man. What very, was that? Very well done, and we appreciate having you as a new listener. Mm-hmm. And uh, the good news is you're actually learned to do something. You got twenty eight thousand bucks here. Because see, that. here's the thing: if he dies, they don't pay seventy five plus twenty eight. Right. They keep the twenty eight. Isn't that interesting? That's what I would call thievery. That's what I would call a bad investment. That when you <laughs> die, they keep your money. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a bad investment. Cash value life insurance sucks. Now, the question I asked, I wanted to ask him about his pension because my initial thought was if all he has is the pension, it might be worth it to keep a term life policy because we don't know, like a pension can die with you or a pension if the if the company goes under, there's some risk there. It's always a good idea to have an nest egg. But um, yeah, I would do that and then watch this 28 grow. And then at some point in the future, Mm -hmm. you might pick up a couple hundred thousand. It sounds like he's a runner. He's probably in good shape. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you probably pick it up for very little and just uh, a couple hundred thousand cost of a pizza, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Check Sander Insurance to see what that costs, Frank. And uh, it might be worth it for the peace of mind. I kept a couple million extra around um, that I didn't need. It was just SWI. Sharon (laughs) wants it. That's all it was. It had nothing to do with financial planning. It was a it was a marriage planning. I feel the same way. wants it. SWI. There we go. I feel the same way. (laughs) <laughs> well, if you make enough money, I can I can put some stuff in the column yeah. that doesn't make sense except that SWI. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's okay. You just got to do that. And, yeah. and we finally dropped that policy. Uh, I guess it was last year, but that thing's been around forever. But the price for you to have that policy, you could light that amount of money on fire and you wouldn't it was, even feel it. Wasn't it wasn't that expensive. Yeah. And, and she said, you know, her comment was, I'd rather you buy me that than some more shiny, sparkly rock things. Well, you know, you got to say it with her yeah. accent. And, uh, <laughs> David. <laughs> yeah. My, my name becomes a seven syllable word when it's, I'm in trouble. There you go. All right. Pete is with us. Pete's in San Antonio. Hi, Pete. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Sure. How can we help? Uh- so I'm calling because um, so I actually had a change in um, in my financials here. I was recently laid off from my employer um, at the beginning of this year in January. 
And because of my tenure there, I'm going to continue to receive a severance pay that's going to uh, continue to pay me at the same rate. How's your new job? So I haven't found a new employer yet. Why? Um, It's March. It's been three months, almost four. No. Uh, so um, my wife actually works also, and I, we have been discussing, and I decided to, to return back to school full-time. So I am currently enrolled in school For what? Which is uh, to, to finish my degree. Uh, my, my degree. In uh, what? For a bachelor's. It's computer information systems. Um, and why do you need degree. that? Well, so, and that's kind of a part of my question. And so uh, my history and background of employment has really been in finance. Um, and I'm trying to kind of pair that with the new, uh, the new kind of computer side of that to, you know, hopefully give me an even better paying job than what I've had. Um, and you so need a four-year my, degree in information systems to do that? There's not a, some courses that you like a, a certificate or a, something less expensive? Uh, so there, there are a couple of things as far as you know, there are in certain languages and programming and whatnot. Uh, I just from the the kind of the opportunities that I was looking for and other employers to apply for, they typically do ask for that two, that four year degree um, and some of the opportunities around here. So I kind of where, where did you hear that three years ago? Because you know that's changed dramatically in the last thirty six months. Uh, yes, yeah, so you know, just looking at the at the job sites for certain employers around my area that I was interested in applying for, I just found that they typically ask for that four year degree. So, okay, what did you uh, used my, to make? So uh, I used to make annually. Um, this past year, I made ninety seven thousand the year. My wife's also employed full time. And what does she? Uh, oh, yeah, you said that. What does she make? Uh, she made uh, a little over ninety two thousand last year. So combined for gross, we were about one hundred eighty eight thousand. Mm-hmm. Uh, net, we were one forty. How old are you? I am 37. Okay. And your question is what, sir? So uh, it kind of ties to what we spoke about. So in this time, I, I'm currently enrolled school full, school full time. And I was just wondering, for first, uh, with the income we have right now saved and our savings and my continuing severance, if we should apply that towards uh, paying off an auto loan and a credit card? Yes. Um, or you make, make $100,000 a year in your household right now. Well, you're paying cash for this education, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how long does the severance Uh, continue? Until the end of September. Yeah, you don't even need your severance to live, though. You can surely, to God, you can live on a hundred grand in Sacramento. I mean, in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, sir. I just have my my mortgage, an auto loan, and uh, you won't have the auto loan anymore. We just paid it off. Okay. Yes, sir. And that's a, kind of my second part as well as the double check is if you feel like I would be able to continue to just go to school full time. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't do what you're doing. I would go get a job making 100 and let them pay for your education and finish your education in the evenings and get your four year degree. I mean, you're already making 100 grand, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't mind your career aspirations, but I think this idea that I, I got fired, so I'm going to quit and go to school, you're hiding. I think you need to get back to work. This is The Ramsey Show. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call here at 888-825-5225. If you're wondering whether to buy or sell a home this year, here's what you need to know about the housing market. There's still more buyers than sellers, more demand than there are homes. The median price is expected to keep rising just at a slower rate. We're anticipating a 7% increase in house prices this year. Interest rates haven't stopped going up, except for when they went down for a week there. I don't know if you jumped in and (laughs) took advantage of the downturn in the market or not, but that was an opportunity for you to lock in your mortgage. 
Um, if you haven't, you might want to check with Churchill Mortgage and see if you can still get in on one of those lower rates that slipped up after the uh, little bank collapse over there in California. Mm. So um, if you hadn't heard, there was a little bank thing over, happened over there. California. And, uh, California. IA. And uh, that's, uh, that's why you need to work with an experienced real estate agent. When you get ready to start buying or selling a home in a market that is returned to normal, it now takes about 90 to 120 days to sell a house, and very few people get 100% of asking price. That is a normal real estate market. It has been that way most of my life, and I'm old. So that's how that works. <laughs> it was one little blip back in 2020 there when we lost our minds. And, uh, I mean, I'll tell you how crazy that was. Used cars went up in okay. value. Gosh. The Mississippi ran backward for two days. <laughs> I mean, it's like unbelievable. Okay. So now it's back to normal and you can find agents that will walk you through this process that are Ramsey trusted. These are our endorsed local providers. They're high octane, high protein real estate agents. They get her done mm -hmm. just like that. Get her done. That's simple. So check it out. RamseySolutions.com slash agent and get a Ramsey trusted agent and get moving. Time to do a real estate deal. Emily's with us in San Diego. Hi, Emily. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my phone call. Sure. What's up? So um, I am going to, in the next couple months, inherit a little bit of money from my father. And it's not a huge amount. It's probably between maybe fifty to 70000 And um, financially, me and my husband are doing good. Um, we do have younger kids. So I'm wondering what would be the best decision for us to invest that money to possibly let it grow and have more wealth for our children. Do you already have money set aside for their education? We do not. Um, my husband is a disabled veteran, so they will get some of their college paid for. When you say some. Some. Most of it. Most of it. Yeah. You know, if it were me, I'd probably put it in like a, a brokerage account where you can earmark it for them. But just a mutual, some mutual yeah. funds and you just say it's, it's our money. Mm -hmm. And if we want to give it to the kids later, we can. I would not move it to their names. I don't, mm -hmm. It doesn't serve any purpose. Um, Y'all got any debt okay. left? We, we have done pretty well with our debt. I have one credit card and then we have um, just like we remodeled our kitchen that has not too high of a balance. Um, not too bad with interest. And those are really the only like How much? interest debts that we have. Uh, the kitchen, I have about 8000 and then I have about 8000 on my credit card. Then I, I'm changing my answer here. <laughs> let, let, let's let's okay. go back and retake this test. Um, I think you need to pay off your debt, and I need I think you need to stop going into debt. And then okay. whatever you have left after this, do you have three to six months saved? Uh, as an emergency fund? We do. We have about 40000 in savings. That's good. Okay. okay. So That's let's good. go back and clean up this debt and swear that we're not going into debt anymore. And then whatever you have okay. left, you can throw into that brokerage account. Fair yeah, enough. Okay. Just, 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 it's, uh, how much do you owe on your home? Our home we purchased about three years ago. We owe about 600000 on it, but we have like a 2.75 interest rate right now. Okay. And your household income is what? Um, net, it's about one thirty. Okay. All right. Emily, I, um, I get the impression that you've uh, listened to us for a fairly short period of time. Is that fair? Yes. I, it's just been about the last couple months when I okay. kind of figured that I would be getting an inheritance, yeah. and I've never invested before. So. Yeah. Okay. I, here's, what, here's what we teach. We have learned, and, and we teach it because for 30 years we've taught it and we've led more people to become what we call Baby Steps Millionaires than anybody else out there. And we've led 10 million people out of debt and into wealth is what it amounts to over many, many years of doing this. So what we're looking for and really what you're looking for at your core is what is the fastest right way to build wealth? Okay. By right way, I mean not taking weird risks. We're not talking about playing the roulette wheel in Vegas or cryptocurrency or some kind of weird crap, right? But just what's the fastest yeah. way to build wealth? Okay, that is that is not that that's safe. That's good. 
the first thing yeah. we've discovered as we've studied 10,000 millionaires in the largest study a millionaire's ever done is they get out of debt and they stay out of debt like it's a disease. Okay. okay. And um, I, I've got to move you onto that planet because you're still using words about your debt like, oh, it's no big deal. It's only $8,000 and a little bit left over from this. And it's, oh, we've got a mortgage, but it's only 2%. Like you want to keep it like it's a pet. Mm. Okay. And so okay. I got to move you off of that planet in, in order to get you to move towards the wealth, the fastest way I can get you there. You can do whatever you want to do. You're a grown up, okay? But uh, the fastest way for your children to end up wealthy is for you to first become wealthy. Mm -hmm. And so then you don't have to worry about whether this 50000 turned into wealth or not if you follow that. So we're going to get you completely debt free because your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And right now in your mindset, it all comes in and it's okay for a bunch of it to go over to the bank instead of into an investment. And we got to stop that, regardless of the interest rate. It's a cash flow problem. And so we're going to clean up those two debts. We're going to make sure you keep that 40000 in place. And that's our first three baby steps. The, th the fourth baby step is be putting 15% of your income out of your monthly budget into retirement. 401ks, Roth IRAs with matching, not with matching, whatever, in good growth stock mutual funds. Baby step five is kids' college is addressed. Six is pay off the house early. Now, you've saved nothing for kids' college because you have a wonderful benefit from your husband's uh, service. Tell him thank you for his service from us, please. And um, thank you. So, so basically, with the 40000 and you take the fifty and you pay off the sixteen. That leaves us 34. I'm probably going to sit down with a broker. If you don't have one, click SmartVestor Pro at uh, RamseySolutions.com. And I'm probably going to open up a couple of 529s and dump about 10 grand into each little kid's name into the two 529s. It's not a lot. If you never do anything else, that's probably okay because you've got most of their stuff covered. The veterans' benefits on this or the disabled vet vets' benefits are incredible for your kids, and they should be. And I'm glad as a taxpayer I get the opportunity to be a blessing to your family but for your service. And so it's one of the few things I'm happy about with my taxes. But the um, – so, so you got that, but I want a little bit more in there, like Jay yeah. said – and then everything after that in your budget that you have extra money left over and you'll have more money because you don't have any payments now except your house payment. I want you to start concentrating on getting rid of this house debt. And so if we did throw 16 at the debt, that leaves 34 and we put 20 into the kids. I'm going to use 14 for some fun things like yeah. a trip or something uh, or just upgrading a car or an item in the house. That's a good idea. Or I'm going to pay down on the mortgage, Baby Step 6. So, Emily, I'm going to send you a copy of the book Baby Steps Millionaires, which will walk you through how to become a millionaire following this stuff without a bunch of risk and without a bunch of craziness. Because you you really make – you've done a good job with your money. I just am fine-tuning it to turn it up to great. Because there's yep. a lot of different things going on in this conversation. Thank you for the call. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America, in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage. David and Kelly are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> Howdy. Better, better than I deserve. Welcome. Where do you live? Richlands, Virginia. Ah, just up the road. Well, welcome to Nashville. Good to have you guys. How much debt have you paid off? We've paid off $335,000. Good, good for you. And your, how long did this take? 
26 months. Good. And your range of income during that two years? 275 up to 350. Wow. What wow. do you guys do for a living? I'm a pharmacist mm-hmm. and a realtor and an electrician and a carpenter. Okay. Oh, Renaissance man. And Definitely. I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> and a pharmacist. Two, two pharmacy Woo. degrees, and uh, that must have been some of the 335. It yes. was. Uh, 180 was student was loans. Woo. Together. Yeah. Together. 180. Six figure freedom. <laughs> and then cars, truck, my yes. SUV, and credit cards. All right. So you're normal. How long y'all been married? 18 years. Okay. Being 19 so what happened? Uh, in that 15th or 16th year that was the wake up and uh got you on this ramsey way so somebody years and years ago had mentioned dave ramsey to us but we started listening to i started listening to the youtube channel and that's literally i was doing construction jobs and started listening to youtube the ramsey show Mm -hmm. and that was literally what turned it on for us it took a little bit to get me on (laughs) here <laughs> Drug her along. Yeah, he felt the need first and kept saying, Well, this, 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 this. And I was like, Oh, no, no, I want a new car. And we got a new car. And then he kept saying, We need to sell the car. And I'm going, No, we're not selling the car. And we kept listening to the podcast. You had a smart car? He I did see a, smart car. a smart car. <laughs> yeah, but that was a little bitty car. <laughs> oh, my that goodness. It is a little bitty. It's a pregnant roller skate. Uh, yeah, yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> and so I didn't want to sell the car. He kept pushing us. And then I, I, we would be listening to the podcast, and I'd be, he'd be out in the garage. I'd run out there, and I said, Dave said if we could pay off the car in 18 months, we could keep the car. I'm keeping the car. We're paying it off. But oh, we, so that was the motivation. <laughs> so this is the red SUV is the one she's talking oh, about. It's, it's not, not a picture. picture. Oh, okay, because I'm like, all of this over a smart car? No, I don't, no, I don't no. understand. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, it's a nice I ride. I have in the a park. Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, for you then, Kelly, it was the give and take. If we if we go fast and we get intense, then that means we get to keep the truck. Absolutely, <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Yes. Well, that works. But yes. So just, the whole thing from the podcast. It literally. I was. mean, from the YouTube. Yeah. From the YouTube, and and now we've we've used the Ramsey Show on the app, and we also have bought some books, but we've given them all away, and we'll buy some more books, and we give them all away. So, but. Also, it was at our church, too. We had already got started into the journey, and then they did a financial peace class at church, and we went to that also. Oh, so, oh okay. Cool. So you did get in and drink the too late. Okay. <laughs> All right. I had already drunk it at that point. I got help get her on board. Okay. Cool, cool, but, cool. Yeah, we literally worked so, 18, 12 to 18 hours a day. Every day, but church nights. And Y'all been working maniacs. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We were faithful to our job, faithful to our church, and then any other holidays, nights, weekend holidays. One time I remember uh, we had worked through the night on a Saturday, or we worked through the day on a Saturday, and it was late, late Saturday night. I didn't realize how late it actually was, Dave. And and I was carrying some tools out to the truck. Uh, like I said, I do construction. I was carrying some tools out, and I, I heard birds chirping over in the trees, and I thought, well, that's really weird. Why are birds chirping in the middle of the night? Night, right that didn't mm-hmm. make any sense to me and then i noticed some light coming from this direction didn't Uh-oh. realize that was the east yeah. and there was a saturday night right you had worked I, all the way through i had worked all night long. wow i had worked all night long wow i, I crashed out about three <laughs> he yeah. come and woke me up at five and said the birds were chirping it's time to go <laughs> <laughs> so we went home slept from about seven to nine went on to church at ten and and that finished up our day. <laughs> Needless to say, we were tired on yeah, Sunday you were night. To- you were toast then. Yeah. So did Why people go, think you, you were guys? crazy? Yeah. I mean, you guys were yeah. just You're going hard. Yeah. Did pe- what, what were people saying? What was your family saying? What were your friends saying? They said we were crazy, but we really didn't take their opinion. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they weren't Just the ones that felt the weight of the debt. That's and right. we did. We That's felt right. the weight of the debt. We felt like we needed to get out from under it. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is now that you did it? We talked about this before. What would we say if you asked us that? I think that staying faithful to church and to the God and let him take care of the rest. Mm. Yeah. And faithful to go to work. Because yeah. uh, good place to go when that's you're broke. broke <laughs> I know, that's right. That's yeah, right. I mean, he, he's faithful to feed the, uh, the sparrow, but he doesn't throw the worms into the nest. No. <laughs> yeah. So no. you went out there, drug it, and killed it, and drug it home. I mean, he gave you the work to do. He, he did, gave you the energy to do we it. Were, we talked about that as yeah. well. And gave you the energy to do it. Every I mean, single energy, time. Yeah. He, he gave us the jobs, the right number of tools, the right place to do it. Close enough to home. I work at a little hospital about 20 minutes from the house. Mm-hmm. And literally every job that I got was on the way home. Oh, like wow. it wasn't, I didn't have to drive an hour and a half or two hours to get to work because I would have wasted all a whole evening, right? If I mm-hmm. had to drive an hour to get somewhere, but mm-hmm. we'd stay working until 11, 12 o'clock at night and then 
roll in, get some about five, six hours of sleep, and head back out to work the next morning. Amazing where the energy went after we're done paying off the debt. I'm like, God, I just don't have that energy no more. Yeah. Well, I bet it feels good to sleep now. You got it. <laughs> You're nor- now you can have a, a, a normal schedule. You don't have to be working through the night. Well, you paid a price to win, yeah. and so you'll never forget it. No. You'll never forget it, and you'll never go back. Not going back. No, yeah. no sir. And you that changed your something. family tree. I mean, yes, that's sir. powerful. Was it worth it? It oh, was. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was. Way to for go. Sure. Way very to go, good. heroes. Thank well you. done. I'm proud of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Very, very good stuff. That's powerful stuff. Sure and, is. And, um, you know, it, it's um, when you can work together the way you guys have knit, the way you've been unified in this approach. didn't start that way, but, I mean, the more you got into it, the more it became unified, the more you, you start to realize we can slay any dragon if we do it together. That's true. And so the next thing that come along won't be a money thing. It'll be something else. No, because we, uh, we beat that But you'll be ready. One. You'll we be ready because you know if you do, do it together that you can do anything. And when we would go to all those second jobs and whatever, we would bring Addison and, you know, it's just still family time. We're just working on a job. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere else instead of at our house, we were at somebody else's house working. Well, <laughs> absolutely yeah i mean that's that's there's and again it's not for life it was for 26 months yes you know and out out of 18 years of marriage and now you're free for the rest of your life with with a fabulous a couple of incomes a couple of pharmacy incomes you can do you're going to make a lot of money Mm -hmm. and you're going to be wealthy unbelievably and and in a position to be unbelievably generous that's That's where the the key is yeah Yeah, you're going to be able to do everything you want to do so well done you guys very well done okay who are your biggest cheerleaders probably each other (laughs) it was us too (laughs) and that little girl sitting over there i love it all right i love it well let's bring addison up how old is addison she's eight eight okay has she she been practicing her debt-free screen oh yes yes. she got y'all got matching better than i deserve t-shirts for those of you listening only uh you ought to see this line up here it's pretty pretty (laughs) sweet very well done hey we've got the uh live and give box or bundle for you that includes the baby steps millionaires book number one bestseller total money makeover number one bestseller financial peace university you've had them and been through all of that you'll probably give them away seems like it's what you've been doing but uh that's what they're for they're for you to enjoy and to give away Thank you guys for making a trip down. What an inspiring people you are. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Very cool stuff. That's, a, that's the way it's supposed to be right there. Absolutely. You Good. guys did it right. David and Kelly and Addison from Virginia, Richmond. To be, was, was it Richmond? Richland. Richland. Rich Rich uh, yeah, it's there an we hour go. Richland. There we go. Up in the Bristol. Oh, okay. Just about an hour past Bristol. Yeah, right across the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. All right. Try it again. David and Kelly and Addison (laughs) from Bristol, Virginia. We'll just call it that. $335,000 paid off in 26 months, making $275 to $350. They worked their tail ends off. Mm -hmm. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt free. Yeah. (laughs) Come on, Dave. In a world where you can be David and Kelly or you can be a bare minimum Monday. Uh, yeah. And everybody knows that <laughs> your life is going to be wonderful and fulfilled by making mediocrity your goal. I mean, come as on. As opposed to making victory, victory. your goal. Well this done. This is it. These guys are fighters, man. They got after it. A lot of work in Very that story. Good. A lot of work. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 21, 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage. But everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. General George Patton said, take calculated risk. That is quite different from being rash. Amen and amen. Mm-hmm. 
Christy is with us um, in Sacramento. Hi, Christy. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Um, so me and my husband are new to the show. We just started watching it uh, this month, and we just started Baby Step 2. Um, but my husband wants to wait to pay off our student debt by to hear what the government says. Um, but I want to just put it all in with our debt snowball. I was wondering if you can give me some advice on how to talk to him about that. That's sweet. It is. He still believes they're going to do it. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Oh. How much of how much student loans do you have? Uh, together it's fourteen thousand. Did you sign for the loans? That's what I that's what I would say to him. I'd say, did we sign for these loans? Let's pay them off. Yeah. Um here, here there's a high correlation between people's ability to build wealth and their belief that their destiny is in their hands, not the government's. Very few, next to no people, next to nothing, next to zero, of the millionaires that we have interviewed over 30 years um, got there believing that the government was going to be a blessing to them. They didn't wait on the government to provide prosperity. Um, instead, they left the cave, killed something, and drug it home and made their own way. They got the machete out and went through the jungle. And so um, to the extent that um, anyone, your husband, you, me, believes that the government is our source of prosperity, it slows down our energy level to go into the marketplace and win on our own, of our own dignity and our own energy. And that's the real tragedy of the, uh, of the Biden administration dangling this carrot, because most of us know that they're not ever really going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not going to happen. It's been a political ploy from the start. Um, I don't believe it's going to happen. It may happen, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to be on here going, I was wrong. Uh, and I, that's happened before. I've been wrong before. Um, Christy, but uh, I, um, there is something inside of you that the, the type of person, and, and it's a decision, it's not a character uh, flaw, it's a decision that you can make differently. The type of person that says, I'm going to make my own way in this world, the type of person that says, I signed for those loans, I have an integrity issue with not paying back money I owe when I'm able to, and I'm capable of it. Uh, those type, those two things that are decisions in your character are leading indicators for your long-term ability to build wealth. And so I would ask um, anyone out there, including uh, you guys, Christian, I appreciate the call. I'm not picking on your husband. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. Uh, I I'm just saying he's naive, number one. It's probably not going to happen, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, I would adopt the character qualities of integrity and of agency of the agency, meaning the sense of I control my own destiny. I'm not waiting on mm. provision from any administration. I'm old, Christy. I mean, I'm 62 years old, and I've lived through in my adult life several, several presidents who uh, of both parties who promised me prosperity. So far, none of them have provided it. Not one. And they won't. Every single thing that has happened to Sharon and I that's positive is due to God's blessings and due to other people that have helped us mm -hmm. and due to our hard work and ingenuity and our refusal to quit. I agree. You know, you said a lot of people, you said you're not going to reach prosperity working on waiting on the government. And I think that more than that, I think there's some folks that might feel like, well, this is my way, my ticket in. I just feel like a lot of people feel like the government owes them something and they're sitting around waiting. And I'm not saying this is the case with Christy. I don't know. But a lot of people feel like I'm entitled to this. The government owes me something. And, and by God, I'm going to get what they owe me. And I just I have a hard time with that. I just it, I, I'm over here and I, I get angry, Dave. 
I'm not going to lie. I get frustrated because I'm like, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Like this, this quote unquote forgiveness, like folks are paying for this. And, and, and folks who've already paid off their student loans are going to, if it, if it goes through, I don't think it will, but if it did, folks that paid off their loans are going to pay for it. Folks that can't afford, you know, it's getting, it'll be spread around the into other people. The two pharmacists that just paid off uh, $200,000 worth of their student loans are now going to have to pay off Yeah. Their. And here's the thing. Most of the people that are getting this forgiveness, I mean, we know what the, the income uh, bracket was. You can just afford to pay off your loans. Just just pay off your loans. <laughs> There's dignity in, in doing work and paying your own bills. I just got to say that, Dave, because it it frustrates me. When you can pay your own bills, that's called a blessing. When you can go through life and you have the money because you've gone to school or you've done whatever and, and, and you can pay your bill, just pay them. Just pay them. You're going to feel great. At, you're going to feel great about yourself. Yeah. Not sitting around waiting for the government. And again, Christy, I, I want you to hear loud and clear. We appreciate you being a new listener. And we're not. It's not you, Christy. We're not, and we're not picking on your husband. I'm not saying your husband's a bad guy. Um, but you said, what do we tell him? I, I would challenge him as an old guy to say, I have walking around experience proof and I've got actual data from the largest study of millionaires ever done. And none of those millionaires said someone else mm -hmm. did this, mm -hmm. um, and, and unless they give credit to God. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, they, they all, here's what's interesting. When we ask them, uh, you, who, you are, who, who is responsible for your wealth? 97% of them said, we did this. Mm -hmm. and, and when we said, can, can it be done again? 97% said it could be done again. When we interview the public that are not millionaires, only 69% said it can be done. Wow. And so what, what you believe about life affects your actions, and your actions create your harvest, your results. Mm -hmm. And so if you plant poison in fertile soil, you will grow nightshade poison, which is a poison, poisonous plant, mm -hmm. in the same abundance that you can grow wheat or corn mm -hmm. in the same soil. Mm -hmm. So what you sow, so shall ye reap. What you pour into your life, your, your belief when you put the seed in the ground is your belief. Mm -hmm. Your harvest comes because you took action on your belief. Yes. And 100% of the time, we all take actions on our beliefs. And so you have to be very careful about your, okay, the action is I'm going to wait on the government. What does that mean your belief is? It means that you don't think you can do it on your own. It means you think the government is your best provision. Yeah. And that, that, is, a, that is a scary belief because now we're talking about socialism. Well, and, yeah, on the and, political side. You mm -hmm. know, Karl Marx never made any millionaires except him. That's what it comes down to. Uh, under communism, there is an elite few that are millionaires, and they're all the people that took it from everyone else. Mm -hmm. None of them were producers. Mm -hmm. Under capitalism, the producers end up with the thing. So all of this to say, Christy, again, uh, this is just us going off now just yeah, in general, are. Not again, not on your particular answer. Uh, and again, I don't want you to take this as condemnation like your husband's a bad guy because we really don't think he's a bad guy. There's a lot of good people that think this. But what I would all challenge all of you that think this is be careful about what actions you endorse because that speaks very loudly what your beliefs are. It and does. And it's going to tell you what your harvest is going to be mm -hmm. because what you plant 100% of the time is what comes out of the ground. 100%? 100% of what you plant in your life comes up in your life. 100% of it, good and bad and ugly. So, hey, good show today. Good show. Well done, Austin, Ben, James, Zach, Andrew, and Kelly. Woo -woo. Kelly's in the booth today. <laughs> Can't call them the booth dudes today. Booth dudes and one gal. <laughs> that puts us hour in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, hey, what's Christ up, guys? Jesus. It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.